So we are in 1998. Oh, there's me. Wow, wow. Oh, that's a, oh, that's a photo. If you didn't read Charlotte's Web in like third, fourth, or fifth grade, I don't know you. She's a vlogger. No wonder I loved her. And she's wearing tiger pants. We obviously stand Judy Moody. What's up? What shall I do today? What shall we do today? What shall I do today? What shall I do? Hi friends, it's me, Kayla. We're here for episode four of reading my childhood favorites. We started in fourth grade, we went to fifth grade, we went to sixth grade. I'm not quite ready to deal with my seventh grade self, so we're going back to third grade. I originally said fourth grade is the year that I started really getting into reading, which I still think is true because a lot of things were happening in my life that made reading my mm, place to be. But I was scrolling through Book Outlet and I saw all of these books that I have memories of reading. And I know I didn't read them in the later years, so I figured let's backtrack. I probably read them in third grade. One of them literally has the word third grade in the title. So we'll get to those. But first we're gonna go into my giant bin and find something from third grade. I have planned everything and organized all of my photos and all of my memory stuff for fourth grade and on, but I never planned on doing third grade. So we're just gonna find out together what I was up to. This is from kindergarten. I don't know that we'll ever, we'll never get to there because I'm not going to read the Mr. and Mrs. books. Look! What did I just freaking say? I just have to share this with you. This isn't third grade, but like, why did I write two A's? Kayla! Here's how I drew a cow in kindergarten. Here's how I drew a cat. My mom taught me how to draw a cat. And that's how I drew a cat in kindergarten. Oh my God, Sailor Moon, what's up? Okay, I have a bunch of stuff from high school that, oh, we'll talk about someday. Journals from high school. Talk about those someday. Oh, I knew it. I knew, I knew I had something. Grade three yearbook, which is interesting because this is the only year we got a yearbook. Why don't we go in every year? Um, so we are in 1998 to 1999, and we're gonna see me... There's a class photo that I forgot. Okay, let's just get right into it. Um, I'm sorry if anybody from third grade is watching this. I sure hope you're not, because that's embarrassing as fuck. I'm not gonna blur this out. It was more than 20 years ago. You're fine. So, fun... Maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. Okay, so that's me and that's my best friend. And if you notice, the photos are organized by height, right? But see how I'm taller than everybody in my row? That's because me and my best friend always argued about who was taller. And so in the class photo, right before they clicked, I went on my tiptoes because I wanted to prove that I was taller, which I wasn't. You might also notice we have the exact same haircut because I copied her. She was my favorite person ever, and I wanted to be just like her. And the girl right next to us also has the same haircut because you know what? We were in a band together called the Power Girls. Not at all inspired by the Spice Girls. Definitely not. I'm wearing a camo shirt, which I remember vividly. I remember where I bought it. I remember the material. It was like a baseball tee. It was green, third grade. I had my first boyfriend who's also in this class, but I'm not gonna call him out because he doesn't deserve that. He was a lovely boy who I did a presentation about how I was going to marry in front of all of our parents. It was like this presentation where we had to talk about where we envisioned ourselves in 10 years. So like just when you were like graduating high school, um, where we thought we'd be. And I made an agreement with my boyfriend and my best friend, that we were all gonna talk about each other in our presentations. How like me and my best friend were gonna live together, how we were gonna go on a trip to France, and how I was gonna be married to this boy. And neither of them mentioned me in their presentation, so I was up there in front of everyone's parents saying, I'm gonna go to France when I'm 18, and I'm gonna marry this boy named blah blah blah. So that's 
great for me. And now we all drew ourselves. So let me find that. Oh, there's my boyfriend. Let's see what he wrote. My year in grade three was great. My favorite activities were gym and art because in gym we got to play t-ball and in art we did tie-dye. My teacher is nice. During the summer holidays, I'm going to Bible camp. Oh, good for you. <laughs> my best friend wrote my year in grade three was awesome. My favorite activities were gym and art because we did tie-dye and in gym I had a lot of fun. I had an awesome year because I had a super nice teacher. During the summer holidays, I will be out on my boat on Okanagan Lake. Oh, there's me. Wow, wow. Oh, that's a... Oh, that's a photo. Okay, there's me. That's how I drew myself. Oh, wow. Okay, I wrote, my year in grade three was great. <laughs> Shocking. My favorite activities were gym and art. <laughs> because in art, we did tie-dye and picture frames. In gym, we played California kickball. That was my shit. We read one of my favorite chapter books, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Here I am saying I'm not a reader, but I wrote about a fucking book in my yearbook. For summer holidays, I'm going to a family reunion and the PNE. The PNE is the Pacific National Exhibition. It's in Vancouver. Uh, and we used to go most summers and just ride some rides, roller coasters and stuff. Cute. So I'm reading The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe which I own. All right, here's all my pictures. This would have been more like first or second grade, but again, we're never gonna get there. So enjoy this moment. I had a really raw upper lip. I remember I was really embarrassed by it because I was sick and I kept like licking my lip. And there were these little like linky toys, kind of like Lego that you could build things out of. Nice leggings, girlfriend. Let's recreate this outfit this week. <laughs> Ooh, just found seventh grade. Hmm, yikes, not. I'm ready for that. Come on. Th oh my god. Okay, this is preschool. But again, when am I ever going to get a chance to show you this? In third grade is when I cut my hair to be like my best friend. So I'll show you a couple pictures right before I cut my hair. Pretty much all pictures from brownies. That's what I was up to in third grade. Selling cookies. Here's me riding a bike with my super long hair. And then here I am with my hair chopped off. Uh, not my best look. Oh my god, there's a Tamagotchi around my neck. Amazing. Iconic. Okay, and then if you want to see the peak of my existence, enjoy this. That's me at the Christmas concert where I would have rather done anything else but wear a dress. But I sure did, and I look real happy, and I wore lipstick for the first time. My grandma, that's my grandma's writing on the back of these ones that say Kayla eight years. So this is right when I turned eight. Spice Girls poster, hell yeah. Barbie doll shit, hell yeah. This one's always nice, just with me and Darth Maul. You know, with my super short hair and my dress came unbuttoned. Love that for me. And that's our trip down memory lane. Let's get into the books. So I actually cleared a spot on my bookshelf right here for a new selection of classics. You all know I'm a book outlet vlogger friend, which means I get books from them. I have my own special page. You can click it down below, check out all the books I've ever bought. And you're going to want to check out these ones because there's a whole collection called the Penguin Pantone Collection. I only needed two of these for this video, but I'm a completionist. I wanted to have everything. Oh my gosh, the first one is sitting on top. This is Heidi. Look at the spine. Basically, Pantone is like a color thing, if you don't know. So every book is gonna be a different color. I'll show you the finished shelf. Once I pull them all out, this is The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, Black Beauty. Here is the number one I will be reading for this video, The Secret Garden. It's pink. We've got A Christmas Carol, which is gold, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. And we also got Allison's Adventures in Wonderland, which is my third copy of this, which is strange because I don't think I've ever actually read it but I keep buying it. We've also got Anne of Green Gables, which is green appropriately. And this might be the last one, The Wizard of Oz. Well, that just made my day. So I'm gonna read The Secret Garden and then we'll see 
there's a couple other books that we might try to get to i know i liked black beauty but right now we're just we're for sure committing to the secret garden which was a big favorite i also got a couple other books this week we will of course be reading charlotte's web if you didn't read charlotte's web in like third fourth or fifth grade I don't know you. I think we actually read this for class, maybe? And then I also got my girl, Piffy Longstocking. <sighs> my like core inspirations at this age were Piffy Longstocking, Pepper Ann, Baby Spice, Spinelli, and Lunette from Big Comfy Couch. Most of them have pigtails. I don't know if that says anything about me. I love Pippi. I feel like I have a really good stat going. I also grabbed a couple other things from Book Outlet because Amber Brown. And then this one is so familiar to me, I can't officially call it a favorite, but it's called Third Grade is Terrible, which just seems very right for reading books from third grade. And I know that I read this, don't know if I loved it, but Amber Brown, I loved. So if you want to pick up any of these, look if the collection is in stock. If you want to pick up any childhood favorites, click my link. Then since I guess we're getting into my TBR, I'll show you a couple other things that I'm thinking of reading. From my own collection, I have Judy Moody and Junie B. Jones. I need to figure out if Junie B. Jones was just like a first grade thing, because the title is Junie B. First Grader. And I don't remember if like all of her stories, like she was a non-aging character and like all the stories took place in the same year. Or if we followed Junie B. Jones later, because I don't know that I would have read these specific ones in third grade if they were about a first grader. But I don't think I'm gonna end up doing like a first or second or kindergarten edition of this video. So I'm gonna look more into these and maybe just read it for fun. I know that Judy Moody, Junie B and Amber Brown were like, you know, that was the trio. And I wonder which one I connected with and which one I'll connect with now. Oh, look how cute this is. Oh my God, I love it. All right, every time I do one of these videos, I take you to somewhere where I spent my childhood. So we're at the park, it's like walking distance to my house, and this is where we would spend a lot of time at the beach. And then when we had a dog, it's also like a dog beach in the dog park. Fun fact, this is also a nude beach. What's that? You just lie here naked. I used to hang out with my family right here at this age, just hang out at the beach. And then 10 years later, I was still here hanging out right there, but getting drunk with all of my friends in high school. That's where I'm gonna skip. I wish Robbie was here. <laughs> He's so much better at that. <laughs> Now I took Liam to my other favorite beach. This is what we called the secret beach because nobody's ever here. And you have to walk along a river to get here. But it's the nice sand in all of Kelowna. You probably can't even hear me. Okay, it's the end of my first day reading my childhood favorites. I already messed up a little because I didn't tell you what I was reading and now I'm already done. But I read The Secret Garden today in its entirety and I loved it so much. I honestly think as important as this was when it came out and when I read it, obviously it's a childhood favorite. I have to be honest, I forgot what this was about. I know I've seen the movie but really all I remembered was that it was about a girl and a garden and a boy in a wheelchair. And that's all I remembered. And then the trailer came out for the second, is it the second adaptation? I don't know, the current day adaptation. And it looks like magical. And so I started to remember it as being a magical story. And then when I posted the video reacting to the trailer, or like commenting on adaptations somebody was like oh I hate that it looks magical and I was like wait it wasn't magical 
it's not magical and like duh of course it's not magical everyone knows it's not magical i don't know what happened in my brain but i started reading this and i got so captivated and had memories of actually reading the words which is a really nice experience and now i'm even more excited to watch the new adaptation just to see what it does um so this is about a girl named mary and she moves in uh with her uncle but she doesn't really get to spend time with him she spends a lot of time on her own and ends up like connecting with different people who live where she lives in this big gothic mansion uh gets to know this other boy and obviously spends a lot of time in this garden and even the blurb so she uncovers an old key in a flower bed and a gust of magic leads her to the hidden door but like it's not that kind of magic it's like you know the magic of independence and joy and connection this is like key character arc her development as a character is great and definitely not something i would have recognized reading it as a child so i'm wondering like what i got out of it when i read it obviously the language is questionable very outdated she was born in india which like first of all she's described as being yellow a lot and it confused me so much because they kept saying because she was born in india she was yellow it, there must be this like illness then it I, I got distracted by all the references to like how she described people from india and um black people and it was kind of a lot certain ways that she treats people and people treat her are questionable she like smacks her nurse at one point when was this written like 1860 70 i don't know in that regard it's interesting to think that sometimes when i read my favorite childhood books and they have questionable content um just things that are outdated or um we're wrong in that time anyway but like people didn't care as much i reference them as what i recommend it to children nowadays and what it, is it something i want liam reading and definitely certain references and things said aren't something that i would like to expose him to but then i also think back to like i obviously read this as a child and it didn't give me negative like thoughts about like i didn't start you know saying rude things or thinking rude things the way that the book implied i think i just need to give kids more credit because i need to give myself more credit that i could read something that's clearly uh not kind about a marginalized group of people and i was aware enough as a child that this was not representative of how i should behave that's all i've got i love these pantone books i think they're so cool i want to read all of them just because they look like that <laughs> today was a success i don't like rating my childhood favorites but i want to because it's a four star my work day is over and we're gonna spend some time today with these three ladies here's today's look inspired by childhood me how did i do Let's talk about movies from 1998. We've got Titanic. I've got the memories of having the two VHS tapes and you have to take one out, put the other one in halfway through. Not a great memorable year for movies besides Titanic. Oh, The Parent Trap. That Ew. also came out. Hey, that was my favorite movie, but I've seen it so recently that I don't care to rewatch it. Also, Night at the Roxbury. Oh yeah, now, now you're speaking Rob's language. That's a good one. What I'm gonna watch make Robbie watch with me is Lost in Space. This was one of my favorites. I remember watching it repeatedly. Uh, it stars Matt LeBlanc and Lacey Chabert. This is the movie I fell in love with her. The only scene I remember from this whole movie is she is like in her room and she has this foldable ladder and she like puts it out her window and 
runs away. And ever since that, I have this dream for years of having a ladder like that to hang out my window for no reason. She's a vlogger. No wonder I loved her. Oh my. That's her ladder! So that's a no to family dinner? Let's see. Do I spend my last night on Earth watching Mom and Dad pretend not to be fighting? Okay, I hope I didn't wait too long to update you. I'm sure you've been waiting anxiously to find out who we stan. Is it Amber Brown? Is it Judy Moody? Is it Junie B? Who's our girl? Who's the one? Who's our queen? It's all of them. They're all the same. <laughs> They're all um, really interchangeable. I don't know why I thought um something like amazing would come out of this i will also note none of these problematic at all which should be a given if you're new here hi but in the past we've had some issues just because of when they're published and you know it just it happens and it's fine um but these didn't have any problems which is kind of nice they're all just girls in elementary school doing their best so junie b is starting first grade in this one and she gets glasses in this book which i didn't know and i'm sure that i felt a connection with her i don't actually remember when i got glasses i feel like it was did i talk about it in one of these childhood videos maybe it was fifth grade but i didn't wear them full time until i think seventh grade she's also dealing with her friends and she has to find a new friend on the first day of school because she's not in class with another friend so like classic relatable school shit love that then we had judy moody who is kind of like your classic 2000s girl who you see on the disney channel who gets into shenanigans and she always has a crazy younger brother right i'm talking that's so raven i'm talking lizzie mcguire and she's wearing tiger pants we obviously stand judy moody here she is look at the fashion icon this one had fun little descriptions of who everyone is so you know going in that she's got some best friends and her little brother and her cat named mouse this is kind of the same vibe she's starting a new year of school dealing with friends who aren't friends anymore new people there's always like some kid that nobody wants to be friends with that our main character always like becomes friends with and realizes he's not that bad and then we've got amber brown who is dealing with her parents divorce in here as well as chicken pox so we've got like topical elementary school stuff you know getting glasses this one also had chicken pox this one had chicken pox and then uh she's traveling because her parents are divorced funny thing about chicken pox it's not funny it's just let me talk about myself for a second or you know half an hour um i actually got the chicken pox when i was like three months old and then six months later as still a baby i got the shingles so fun history about me but she is traveling to london and paris with some family and then to visit her dad there is some like weird ways that her parents talk to her in here about the other parent probably realistic unfortunately but like i just didn't enjoy that but i'm sure kids going through divorce probably like related to this so much and i enjoyed them all i mean as much as i can as an almost 30 year old lady i would happily pass well i will <laughs> happily pass all of these on to liam i need to work from home today i have a lot to do and i made a 1998 playlist that i can jam to throughout the day uh so we still have the third grade nostalgia running through our veins I 
have been really trying to find my brownie badges. You can see them in a bunch of photos. I had like the most out of all the brownies because I'm an overachiever. Hi, I'm an Aries and I just can't find them. But I did find this little box that I have um, like pins and jewelry and stuff. And I found a couple from Girl Guides, not from this particular year. But here's my pin from Sparks. Here's my pin from a couple years later in like Pathfinders where I earned the Canada cord. And then I found this one, which is like a BC pin. I don't even know, but I know I got it from Girl Guides as well. And then I found a couple things from my grandma. So in third grade, my grandparents lived within walking distance of my school and they always like worked from home. So they watched me a lot. They did um, furniture building, upholstery and stuff. This is a little craft that <laughs> my grandparents would have made. It's like a glove turned into, do into dogs. This is a really uh, old ratty thing that I still have. Both of these grandparents passed away when I was pregnant with Liam. So they never got to meet him, which is really sad. Um, but I have these pins. She always wore brooches of angels and stuff. And then I have this cute little cross that you can actually see her wearing in one of the pictures that I have. Isn't that cute? I don't know if you can tell. Probably. Energy is really low. I'm not feeling well. So um, I'm reading The Chronicles of Narnia today. I got the audiobook and I think I'm going to listen to it just so I can lie here and relax but i'm pretty sure i only read the lion the witch in the wardrobe when i was a kid which isn't even the first story in here but i guess the first book published was the lion the witch in the wardrobe then there's a couple more and then five years after the first lion the witch in the wardrobe the magician's nephew was published but c.s lewis um would like them read in the order of the magician's nephew then the line the witch and wardrobe so this book has them in the correct order i found this at the thrift store a couple years ago and apparently it's worth a good amount of money on ebay well probably not right now because you know we're in a recession since i only read the line the witch and the wardrobe though uh, i do intend to just read this one today i might continue on um, I'm not really sure, but reading my childhood favorites involves just that story for now. And that is 196 pages. That's it. Only 196 pages of this whole bind up. So that's what I'm up to. My mom sent me this picture of her camp blanket that she just posted on Instagram a couple years ago. So I thought I would share that. These are some badges that, uh, we collected when I was young. Usually in these videos, uh, obviously I haven't been feeling well, so I haven't been doing this to the full extent that I wanted to, but I've been having a really good time doing the actual reading portion, so at least there's that. I just finished Charlotte's Web, and it was even better than I remember. Um, and I found my butterfly clips, and I remember buying these, was it in my original like fourth grade one? Because I grabbed some little elastics to do my hair. It was in my fourth or fifth grade. I don't really remember now. But when I was doing that, I grabbed butterfly clips and I was like, this was from before, but if I ever do a third grade, like, I can wear these. And I forgot and now I have them. So my go-to hairstyle in third grade when I had short hair and I had no idea what to do with it, this was the look. Oh dear. I'm guessing my hair was also parted in the middle though. So it worked a little better. Um. Yeah, that's interesting so charlotte's web if you haven't read it for some reason it's about this pig and this spider we also have fern i haven't actually seen the movie i know that's controversial i feel like so many people love the movie it's one of those things that like brings back childhood nostalgia for a lot of other people but i was a little old at the point that like the dakota fanning version came out so pardon my ignorance but i forgot like what this book was and i think when people talk about the movie they probably like mention the fact that it's like a really emotional movie i'm just assuming but since i haven't watched it my memories of this whole story weren't super clear so uh the references to 
them like wanting to kill the pig throughout this book was very upsetting and i know that like that's the intent of the book but i definitely for fucking got that i don't know what i thought this was i thought it was like some girl and the pigs speak to her and who's the spider i don't really know what's she up to full-on couldn't remember um but yeah it's about like this pig who's <laughs> like gonna get slaughtered and the other animals specifically the spider decide to like save him by making the humans think that he's like really special so charlotte like writes stuff in her web so they save him and then at the end charlotte dies which like yeah i get it she's a spider i don't know how like i'm just wondering why do i remember this as being a favorite is it because it was devastating and had this crazy impact on me i'm not crying by the way i just had a coughing fit i think maybe now thinking back to this time in my life this might have been the catalyst of my vegetarianism i know that it was around third or fourth grade uh that i decided to become a vegetarian for the first time it did not stick for a hot minute here's the thing about being a parent is like I just want to protect Liam right I don't want him I I know that one day his innocence will be ruined and I just want him to be innocent for as long as possible but obviously um this book and books in general are sometimes like the first time your child will experience pain like that having a beloved character die or learning that like animals die but obviously it's important like f for them to learn that and obviously me learning that at this age something else interesting uh, it's important i don't know what i'm saying i know i don't want liam reading this but i know it's important for his life journey and he plays video games where people shoot each other so really like what am i talking about something interesting is that this character is eight years old and I just started Pippi Longstocking and this character's eight years old. I didn't pick these because of that, but obviously I was relating to the characters who were exactly my age and like wasn't even acknowledging that. I wasn't thinking like these were my third grade favorites because I was eight and they were eight. I just remember them being my favorites. Anyway, this was lovely. Uh, the pictures are amazing, but sad as fuck. And I think like... <laughs> Look at a pig. Oh. But I think I need to go watch the movie now. And I'm wondering if I... I guess Liam has seen movies like it. So he'd be fine. I'm more worried about me. I think I'm going to watch it and cry. But first, I'll read Pippi Longstocking. I don't really remember. Um, I know I loved the show. I don't have really strong memories of the book itself or what happens in it. But I know that I read it and loved it because then I watched the show like obsessively too at some point in my life. So the whole thing with Pippi is um, she is new to town and she doesn't have a mother or father and she lives alone with like her monkey and her horse and then what happens? She just doesn't fit into society properly. People reject her because she's wild. Have you ever heard of this book? Have you read it? Oh, you never read it and you never heard of it. Do you want a butterfly clip? Oh my god, you're so cute. Um, this is a movie I'd like to watch with you. Do you approve? It's about a pig. Sure. He talks. Sure. And there's a spider. Sure. And she talks too. I swear when I learned the recorder, I'm just looking at the recorder over there. Um, I swear I learned it in third grade, not fourth. I learned it in three. Oh, you did? Oh. Lamb school, or maybe all schools, I don't know. But they get, um, what do you call those? Belts. Belts. It's like a little ribbon, depending on how much you learned i guess what's up i need to sanitize this now Good. 
You're very talented. Okay, it's the end of reading my childhood favorites. I definitely did not do as thorough of a job or as good of a job as previous ones, but I think that's to be expected. I think we're all kind of struggling, especially this week. But with what I lacked in content, I definitely made up for in actual reading. So I read everything that I intended to. I was thinking of picking another Pantone book, but I didn't really know which one to choose. I'm thinking about eventually, once I'm done all of these childhood ones, doing like um, a bonus episode where I read books that I didn't really know where they fit. But anyway, upon editing this, I realized I didn't fully explain a couple of these books, but I did read them. I just didn't take clips of them. <laughs> so I did read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. That's the only one that I picked from here. And it's funny because um, for a lot of these other books, I referenced the fact that I completely forgot what they were. It was like a brand new experience and really enjoyable because of that. But this one, the reading experience was so interesting because I didn't forget anything like this exactly as I remember it, which is strange because I don't think I've seen the movies. Again, like with Charlotte's Web, um, once the movies came out, like I was graduating high school, so this just wasn't the type of thing that I cared to watch. So I don't think I've seen the movie. I don't even know if there are more than one. I think maybe the whole series has been done, but I don't know. So it's strange to me that I remembered everything. I remembered every character. I remembered every scene, like Mr. Tumnus, the queen, and even her Turkish delights. Like, I remembered all of it. I remembered how Lucy went into the wardrobe and then came back and told her family and they didn't believe her and then they all went through together and the door disappears and one of them goes off with the queen and I remembered all of it and because of that it was enjoyable but at the same time um, it felt a little like boring to read. I don't know. But it was good, still recommend. It's a classic for a reason. The reason that I repeatedly mention, like, does this hold up? Should kids read it nowadays? Is it something that I would want Liam to read? Is because I don't, <laughs> might be controversial, I don't personally believe that just because a book is a classic, or just because, like, it came out so long ago, or just because people have been reading it for so many years, or just because it was written by, like, a white man in the 1800s, like, that doesn't mean that we should be reading it today. Obviously, I can't deny these books are important for like the history of literature, but it doesn't mean that you have to read these to, I don't know, be respected as, what, as a child? What am I saying? I just think there are so many like middle grade books written current day, um, so much more voices available so many different stories that I don't have to push classics onto Liam like it's okay that he's reading and it's great that he's reading like currently published things so yes all of these will be available to him but I don't know like when or if he'll ever want to read books from my childhood movies from my childhood that's a whole different thing those are absolutely pushed on him. Uh, I don't think I talked to you well I know I do know. I filmed a clip, but I was really sick and I didn't want to include it because it was a rough clip. Uh, but I did read Third Grade is Terrible. This was not as memorable of an experience as anything that I read. I know that I read it, but it's not um, something really outside the box. It's the same story of like a girl starting a new grade and her friends aren't her friends anymore and her friends have new friends and them deciding they could still be friends and have new friends. <laughs> That's all it was. Uh, it was interesting. There's like, there's two teachers in here. There's the nice teacher who's thin and pretty. And there's the mean teacher who's a larger bodied individual, which I did not appreciate the stereotype of, but we'll live. Oh my God, it's like Matilda. What else didn't I talk to you about? Oh, Pippi. I finished Pippi last night. This was really good too. I forgot that this is like a collection of stories, which is fun. It obviously um, all like makes sense. You should read it in order, but it's not like one long narrative. It's little snippets into Pippi's life. 
and it was fun. There's one where it's like, it's called Pippi Goes to the Circus. And then there's one chapter, one story, that's Pippi entertains two burglars. And they're just really cute and really funny. Even as an adult, like, I thought, I thought this was really adorable. Maybe just going through life, being different than other kids. And it was fun. And then, yeah, that's it. So, recap, Secret Garden, amazing, Judy Moody, Amber Brown, Junie B, all still solid. And then Charlotte's Web, still a great classic. And um, really, like I understand why this got uh, the attention it did and why we all had to read it because it's a very well told story. It's got a great arc. It's got great characters. Um, the moral of the story, etc. Everything is really good. I don't really remember my other childhood videos, but I feel like this was one of my most successful, one of the most enjoyable. And it's just weird that this was the perfect time to do this. This is the week that I needed easy reads, comfort reads, and to revisit a simpler time. So I'm really glad that we did this together. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, yeah, that's it. I'll see you this weekend with a book haul. And I'll show you all the book outlet books I got again because I'm so excited about them. This collection makes me very happy. I didn't even mention these are like two or three dollars. Like how could you, how could anyone resist? Okay, bye.